Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Watch and Listen podcast. This is a video podcast all about watches. You can watch it on YouTube, or you can listen to it on iTunes, Android, Google Play Music, or wherever you get podcasts. I'm your host, Matt Farah, and I host this show with my good friend Cameron Weiss, the master watchmaker and the CEO of the Weiss Watch Company, making watches from scratch here in Los Angeles. This episode is brought to you by Crown and Caliber, the place to buy secondhand luxury watches online. You know who pays retail? Suckers, folks. Only suckers pay retail. And most watches take a huge depreciation hit the second they go out the door. That means that you, potential second owner, could save hundreds or thousands or even tens of thousands of dollars by shopping at Crown and Caliber. Crown and Caliber has everything from Breitlings to Rolexes, Omegas to Paddocks, oddball uh, stuff uh, that you might not have heard of before, Uh, things like IWCs. They've got it all. They have over 2,000 watches in stock. They have a team of watchmakers and technicians to make sure these watches are running correctly. They they can sell you a watch over the internet in the least shady way possible. Also, they could buy or trade for your watch. Use code CAM150, that's C-A-M-150, and get yourself $150 off your first watch at Crown and Caliber. That's code CAM150 and get $150 off any watch at Crown and Caliber. Check them out. I'm also drinking Beeline Coffee. Uh, this stuff is delicious. It is uh, packed with flavor. It comes from the best coffee producing regions in the world Nicaragua, Honduras, Ethiopia, Costa Rica, uh, Jamaica, all the good places. Uh, single origin, micro batch stuff. They have a new slow lane decaf that just came out. They have an espresso roast. Uh, We're going to have a new smoking tire roast pretty soon, as well as a new Weiss Watch Company roast. It's all good. And if you use code CHRONO at BeelineCoffee.com, that's code CHRONO at BeelineCoffee.com, we will give you 15% off anything in the entire store. 15% off with code CHRONO at BeelineCoffee.com. On this episode, we are going to be talking about one of my favorite topics, uh, a great place to start if you're interested in collecting watches. We are talking about vintage Seikos today. Uh, Vintage Seiko has been one of the hottest uh, ticket items uh, in terms of uh, actual value increase year over year. The watches have like doubled in price, and we've got a bunch of them to check out in studio. Let's get to it, it's Watch and Listen. Hello kids, it's Watch and Listen, bienvenue, beautiful afternoon here in Los Angeles, welcome to the studio, today we're talking about vintage Seikos. There have been a lot of requests to talk about vintage Seikos. Uh, it is a popular entry into watch collecting. And uh, special say gateway drug. Gateway drug, yeah. says Mr. Nick Farrell of DC Vintage Watches. Welcome, sir. Thanks for having me. It is a pleasure to have you in the studio. You are a... Let me... Oh, Jesus. How dare I not have your... Uh, Instagram up on the screen, DC Vintage Watches on Instagram, dcvintagewatches.com. You guys specialize in vintage Seiko and vintage Hoyer. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, Thank you for volunteering to do our little show here. Anytime. Um, I'm kind of stoked, actually, about this. Vintage Seikos are cool. I'm I'm really excited for this one because I actually know very little about it. Vintage Wait, Seiko. Cameron so gets I'm to learn, learn something, something today. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Cam- like Cameron usually comes in to the studio for a show with like all these materials and watches and shit. He came to the studio today with nothing. Yeah. I was like Seiko episode. <laughs> just a, just I'm not studying. <laughs> I don't have to bring anything. Yeah. I know nothing. He was. You had so little responsibility yeah. for this one that you drove the international. <laughs> uh, of course. Uh, you're gonna want to follow uh, follow Cameron on Instagram, Cameron M Weiss on Instagram, and of course the Weiss Watch Company on Instagram. Where if you put watch and listen in the description of any uh, or in the comments box of any Weiss watch you buy, it's any watch, right? Any watch. Any watch. Um, Cameron hand makes uh, strap changing tools in his on his uh, lathe lathe. 
Yeah, on our lathe. Uh, on the lathe. Yep. They're dope. I have one. <laughs> and you'll get a free extra strap and a free changing tool if you type watch and listen on his Instagram. You feel me? And then, of course, follow moi on uh, the Smoking Tire Instagram. I see my cat, Conrad. That's what's up. <laughs> Lotus Evora Long Termer starts today. That's what's up. Porsche engine being worked on. Thank fucking God. Finally, right? Finally. <laughs> Finally. So my car's been doing a lot of sitting, Nick. You're, just, you're new to this one, but my car's been doing a lot of sitting. Finally, some work is being done. Oh, vintage Seikos. Should we... Um, I did homework last night, Cameron. Look. Homework. Should we, do, should we drop in real quick to how we got to this period of Seiko? Because when we talk about vintage Seiko collecting Nick Farrell, what period of time are we typically talking about? Well, he's, well, what we specialize in, but also seems to be very popular on the forums, et cetera, and watch collectors would be like the 60s, 70s, and some of the early 80s era. Okay. Now, particularly 60s and 70s. 60s and 70s. I thought you would say that, sir. <laughs> I really did, and that's why Maddie did some homework. <laughs> so I wrote down 10 key dates. We're going to do it real quick. You okay. will do it together. I'm going to go through a quick list. Chime in. Sure. Please, I, I'm general. Please make details on this. Uh, the history of Seiko from 1881 to 1969. That's what we're doing right now. And we're stopping at the 70s, folks, because we're going to have to do a whole other modern, because <laughs> we're going to do a Seiko and Grand Seiko current mm. episode as well. That ain't this one. 1881, Kintaro Hattori opens a shop selling clocks and watches in Tokyo. That shop... Uh, then grows. He outgrows it, and he opens a factory, the Seikosha factory, making uh, wall clocks. Are these things worth any money, a Seikosha wall clock? You actually don't see them very often, to be I honest. I can't imagine they're around. Yeah. It's people's grandma's house, like <laughs> estate sales, maybe. Yeah. Um, in 1895, whoa, I scrolled down too fast. In 1895, Seikosha mm -hmm. builds their first pocket watch. Um, and uh, it looks almost like a pocket watch that you would get it from a Waltham or in America or standard pocket watch. Yeah. Are those around? Does anyone ever, <laughs> does anyone ever see those? No. You see more like Elgin and, and watch companies right. like that. Yeah. Uh, in 1913, their first ever wrist, wrist watch, which is called the Laurel. And I have to say, it's a very pretty watch. It kind of reminds me of like actually like an RGM watch, which we were just talking about outside. It's got a nice like white dial and pretty numbers, and <laughs> I don't know. And it's also yeah, it's called nice looking. it's a it's a quality looking watch. He uh, there are supposedly very few of these around. Have you ever Correct. seen one of these? No. Would they be worth massive money, or does it just no one give a shit? It's a little bit of both. I I, I haven't seen them. When I have seen them, they do go for a fair amount, but it's not again. It's not going to approach like your level, like you would see with like Rolex or right. anything like that. Right. Okay. Yeah. So just because it's rare doesn't mean it's necessarily valuable. Correct. But what? Okay. What about let's restrict it in the land of Seikos? Is a Laurel the shit? No. Okay. No, not not in my personal opinion. Okay. At least not that I've seen. Okay. Them. That's that's fair. Everyone um, has their own thing, obviously. <laughs> that's cool. The I'm just curious, like if there's you know. If there's a demand for very, 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 very early Seiko, I, I or, feel like that's up Jonathan Ward's alley. Oh mm. fuck, Jonathan Ward right? would be is all about something like this. Yeah, he would he would like trade a whole car. Our friend Jonathan <laughs> Ward builds these incredible, customized, off road or not just off road, all yeah. kinds of vehicles. Nice. But he, he is he's like a he's walking taste. He's just taste. Mm. He's tasting everything. And he has like a crazy vintage watch collection. He would love this. Show. Well, there you also get with the early watches as well. You saw this trend towards the large di uh, millimeter size watches. Uh -huh. And when you get these early watches and you know the teens and really up until about the seventies, they tend to be pretty small. What you characteristically think of today as like a, a ladies' watch, or watch. something like that, right? For, Especially in Japan. Uh, correct. <laughs> right? We're getting away from that a little bit more towards a smaller diameter, uh, which I personally love. You like the small diameter. I, I'm talking forty millimeter. I don't need a oh, 50, yeah. 50 mil. I mean, a large. I'm not a large. I don't know guy, if I can. So. I don't cross point a five zero either. Five zero <laughs> yeah. is certainly the <laughs> fifty millimeter is almost like a pocket watch. Yeah, you know yeah, yeah. I mean? or like a Breitling for Bentley. Yeah, <laughs> also true. Uh, Nineteen twenty four, the first ever Seiko brand watch, which kind of almost looks not uh, not dissimilar to a Weiss watch. Actually, I mean, the yeah. the, the seconds, small seconds, is different, but mm. 
not entirely dissimilar. Uh, and then uh, they, uh, there's some other things that happen. Fast forward, <laughs> 19. I'm going only to the to the to the key moments here. They invented di- uh, Dia Shock. Yeah. Nick, do you want to give me a, give us a primer on Dia Shock? I mean, Dia Shock was really just a. I mean, it says verbatim right there. It was more of a thing to ensure against shock resistance. So when you drop the watch, you wouldn't be ruined like some of the early ones were. There you go. Um, without getting overly te- technical, and by means, uh, Cameron would know far more about that than I would. Yeah, we talked about uh, Inca Block on yes. one of the previous exactly. episodes. Uh-huh. Exactly. That's yep. the, exactly. the Swiss kind of equivalent of mm-hmm. that. Rolex has their own version mm-hmm. as well. They must have named it their own thing too, right? They come up with their own name yes. for everything, right? Yes. What do uh, they call it? Do you remember? Oh, I forget the name that they call. Uh, I don't. I'll remember it sometime <laughs> in the show. But Inca Block's the main one for all the Swiss. In brands. your, in your, I saw a Hoyer watch in your case down there that had said Inca, Inca Block on the dial. Correct. The Moon Phase said Inca Block. Yep. On it. Yeah. Nineteen fifty nine. Uh, the first Seiko with uh, the per- the magic lever uh, mm-hmm. system, which is the both directions winding. Correct. Yep, that's completely correct. Completely allows you to wind the watch in both directions. 1960, the first ever Grand Seiko, the Seiko without limits. <laughs> why did they go? High? They do. Why does Grand Seiko? Why are they so about being high in the mountains? They're all about the mountains. High in the mountains. Maybe, maybe and it's, they're drawing a parallel between that and the, the, it's the best they sell. I mean, so much so that they even spun it off from regular Seiko now. Yeah, no, totally. They yeah. stopped writing Seiko on the dial entirely. Mm-hmm. I was just in the Seiko boutique in Miami. Nice. Uh, that's just why my voice sounds like garbage. Not because I was in the Seiko <laughs> store, because I was in Miami for a bachelor party. And uh, <laughs> I, ha- I, I had to go to the Seiko store, and they got some... Sw- Dude, there is a grand Seiko out yeah. right now. It's a two-tone golden steel. With a like a brown dial that is like a way doper version of like a date just. <laughs> and it's like eleven thousand dollars and I really had to stop myself. Yeah, that sounds about right. It was so nice. Shout out to the Grand Seiko store in Miami if you're down there. Uh nineteen sixty four, the mm-hmm. first ever uh stopwatch. They made a stopwatch and uh then sixty five, the first ever di- uh, Japanese mm-hmm. dive watch. Sixty seven they win a, uh, uh, a a competition in Switzerland. Overall, they submit 45 movements. Pronounce this correctly, Cameron. Uh, Neuchâtel? Neuchâtel. I'm, I fuck up the Swiss pronunciations, <laughs> Nick. Neuchâtel Observatory Competition, uh, which is for movement accuracy, right, Cameron? Yes. So they, they smoke fools. Hmm. They don't win overall, but it says they win fourth through tenth. Uh, and or, I'm sorry. They don't win first, but they... Took the entire, like, over mm-hmm. half of the top ten. Uh, and so the people are like, whoa, they're, like, legit now. And then 1969, the Caliber 6139, uh, the world's first automatic chronograph with a vertical clutch and column wheel. Woo! <laughs> That's ten important dates in Seiko history. And now I can close my book. And now we can talk about watches. So that's the beginning of Seiko 2 now. It's 100 and what? It's 80 years. 1880, 1970, mm-hmm. 70, 70, 90 years. Sorry. <laughs> uh, now let's talk about collecting them. What is it? What drew you uh, you to this brand? Um, I think it started in high school. So we're without dating myself too much for say the '90s era uh, was when I first started looking at Seiko personally. And a lot of it, as I mentioned, it's like almost like the gateway drug, where it's like it's not your the ty- the price point of like. Rolex or any or Omega or things like that, so it's very accessible for yeah. someone on a on a tight budget like a, a high school or really a college student. Uh, particularly back then in the '90s, uh, like a, some of these pieces date that that I brought in today date to the '90s uh, that I bought back then. Brand new for that reason, yeah. yeah. And it's they're they're it's good value for the money. Um, it's um, some of like the, for instance, there's a couple examples here from the 6139 is a very price point affordable like chronograph. Yeah. Um, well, let's let's look at some. And there's history too. Everyone loves the history that the stories can tell. Well, uh, yeah, let's we can go kind of sort of you know watch by watch on that. Yeah. I think what's interesting about Seiko is uh, unlike a lot of other manufacturers, they're pretty vertically integrated. Hmm. Um, you know, they they make all their own componentry. I Precisely. believe, right? They yeah, they do, right? Just yeah. I'm not just, right? I'm, I I. I say that like I know what I'm talking about. I do, right? <laughs> I think I do. you do. Yeah. I think I do. It's it's very impressive, and they they span many different levels of quality and finishing and everything mm-hmm. it's, it's it's an amazing company yeah all right where should we start here 
Uh, where do you want to start, Nick? What do you want? To, what What's interesting to you? I mean, we can go just pick a watch. Logically, just pick a random one. All right, there, Cameron, your hands this on that. One? That All one. All right. All right. I, I gravitate we... to that one. I like the <laughs> dial of it. All right. What do we have here? So right we're, here, we have a uh, a world time watch, and this dates to the to the, I believe that I'd have to look. At, and this this is the other thing I wanted to get in. The thing that I love, I mean, obviously, I, a couple I've, more darks I've collected a ton of vintage watches, but the thing I love is that Seiko made it very easy to date the age of the watch with the first two digits of the serial being the the month and the year. So as long as you know the decade the watch was made in, you can pinpoint the month. And okay, the year. wait, 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 wait. Uh, it's with the serial number, mm -hmm. the first two digits. So if you flip that watch over and you look at the serial number on the back, so the as long as you know the decade, <coughs> and I believe that that was produced in the 60s, the first number will be the year, and the second number will be the month. So what they do is when, obviously, there's 12 months, the zero would be the October, and then they would put an in. So here's November. the serial so number at the June, bottom, right? June so we 67? got sixty-seven. There you go. Okay. There's uh, sixty-seven. Sixty-seven. Right? Yeah, that because that was a six. You have to know the decade. Yeah. And that was a sixties oh. era vintage watch. So wait, so you where see right there where am I looking here? On the are you looking at the top uh, or the, the bottom? bottom? That serial the, number mm -hmm. there. The bottom. So that's a one six three four four nine seven. Uh, it's actually a seven. Oh, that's a so seven yeah, seven yeah. three. So, okay. So I'm like, sorry. The like picture said, that would be a June nineteen sixty-seven watch. So. Getting to this very small thing, uh, <laughs> some people have you know it's tough to find the, the watch cam is a tough thing to deal with because it's like there's not much between this quality level and then like a crazy rig that costs five grand. I found one though. I found the next up from this. Oh yeah. So for those listening and are not pleased with our <laughs> watch cam, very few people have actually complained about it. But it's is something that is always on my mind to improve our watch cam, and I found a watch cam. That's like under a thousand bucks, and it has an optical zoom instead of okay. this, which is a full digital zoom. So, possible improvement to watch cam coming soon. So I apologize. Perfect. You can't read that. <laughs> oh, serial number. Uh, yeah, that's. I'm sorry. We're working on that. Okay, so that's a seven six. So it's from the. Uh, say that again. June 1967. Okay, the sixth month of 67. Yeah. Got the it. only thing you have to know is what decade it was exactly. from, because it resets every decade. Yeah. Precisely. And is that ongoing yeah. today? If I buy a brand new Seiko, I, does that work like that? That's a good question. I, I haven't bought a <laughs> recently. Oh, yeah. Right. We'll have to look at your You know what? I, next, it's going to have to be next show. I, <laughs> yeah. I, the next for some show reason you, today, yeah. I was like, I don't want to wear the T-shirt of the band we're going to see today. <laughs> I decided we talked about I believe about it is continued, actually. I, is I it? I believe okay. they, they still do that to this day. Cool. <laughs> I could be wrong, but I'm, I'm pretty sure they do. Okay. Oops. What, how did I end up on that page? Okay. Uh, so what's so flip the watch back over there. So one of the things that you talked about um, in your timeline was um, some of these research. I think some of these world timers were actually used to time various aspects of the Olympics in a more, uh, in a smaller fashion than the official one that they talked about on the timeline. Uh -huh. So, but just, but just in general, it's a GMT watch. Um, so uh, for our listeners, you know, that's uh, what, six, seven hours ahead, London time GMT. Yes. Yeah, so wait, so it actually does, it's meant, it's a 24 hour hand or it's, yes, okay. The, uh, the, on there would be the, the black hand on that, that one. That short one. The short little guy, yeah, mm -hmm. okay. So that would go one circle around every 24 hours. Right, yeah, okay. And then there's various, you can see the the um, the inner chapter ring uh, can rotate via the crown, yeah, can depending you, on the city that you're in. Is that working functionally? Can yeah. Cameron give that a spin? Yep. And in the meantime... When the crown is in a depressed, the you know, normal, yeah, just go ahead and spin it. You shouldn't need to take it out. All right. And a lot of the GMTs, I brought a couple other GMTs here. They uh, they have a similar function. That looks great. And oh, by the way, the, how much how much is a watch like this? For it, it's going to depend because there were several variants of this. It'll uh -huh. on the variant will depend on do you have the original bracelet that it came with, right? Um, for excellent examples, and, and this is a decent example. This isn't by any means new old stock. Four or five hundred. Four or five hundred bucks. As much as six hundred, depending. Oh, on that's condition. nice. Compare to. Paddock Philippe World Time, <laughs> 18 karat gold, only 38,000. Price point's a little different on that. Yeah. It is, but you know what? I mean, the overall, you know, design is not dissimilar. It's it's functions a, it's are a, the same. The function is basically the same. I sh now I'll get an angry email from from Patek. From Paddock, yeah. Paddock, yeah, sorry. <laughs> well, whatever. <laughs> uh, it's a lovely little watch. That's cool. Functional world, and is that automatic as well? Yeah. There's a manual yeah. line? Yep. And we can we can look at the other GMTs after this. Uh, maybe we can which, organize yeah, that way, which would be... Yes, that, that one, right? Uh, that one right there and, and that one. Oh, wait. No, I'm sorry. Not that one. This, no, no. 
Uh oh. Did we not pull that one up? Start with that the metal bracelet guy. Yeah, that one right there. Sorry, in, in this one right here. We actually, he brought a, he, like John Ward, Nick brought a big case. And we, <laughs> yeah. we had to make a few decisions. A big, that, big shout out to Pelican for their amazing cases. Yeah, here, I'll zoom out so you can uh, put some other, other watches next to that. So most of these watches I brought in today are from my personal collection. There, there are a couple that are on the website, like the one I like this Cameron one. This up. other one almost has like the almost the dive style like turtley case, but with the world on, time on in the, it in the, the middle on the yeah. right with the gray dial. Yeah, on the, yeah, that was from their um, their sports divers, and back then, I I believe it was fifty meters, which uh-huh. back then was like you know your not not your deep scuba divers, but like your snorkeling you know, snorkel. exactly, yeah. exactly. So they that was apparently a thing back then that was still relatively new. Uh, so they called their line their sports divers, and uh, there's there's a whole line of of uh, of sports divers from Seiko during the '60s and '70s. They're yeah, really amazing. I I really like. I mean. The style of these are like it's really coming back in like past ironic yeah. into cool, you yeah. know, sort of way. Precisely. These watches, like, like you you could have bought them for like real cheap a few years ago, and now you know they were like a hundred dollars. Yeah. Now they're like five, six, seven hundred thousand for stuff like this. But that's still compared to you know a lot of the Swiss stuff is cheap. Yeah, correct. Correct. Are these all? Is there? I mean, are these? You know, because the modern ones are known for being really reliable. Are the vintage ones really reliable? I think so, personally. I mean, they, you know, you always hear that. And I, again, I defer to Cameron as, as the legitimate watchmaker. I don't try to pass myself off as one. Just a big fan. But um, would be, um, you know, they, I guess they say every, like, three to five years to get the, yeah. the movement serviced. Uh, I do confess for some of these Seikos that I've had since the 90s, it's like every 10 years. And 10 years? St- it's not great on the movement i don't think but they've gone that long and haven't had any issue with accuracy and you were talking within a minute or two minutes every 24 hours yeah that's not uh, so gaining bad. or losing so yeah yeah they're quality movements yeah. so they, uh they might not be high highly decorated mm. movements yeah but they're the engineering and the manufacturing and the they're they're well put together tolerances are good they can keep a really good time it's not like the chinese knockoff watches today that have those movements that are just pieces of crap when yeah. they're new. These were actually really solid movements mm-hmm. from the beginning, but not meant to be as decorative as the Swiss movements. Which, I mean, they don't have display backs for the most yeah, part. So that wasn't the intention. Who gives a yeah. shit, right? Exactly. Keep, I'm sorry. I keep, keep, I'm not no, used fine. to having a wire here. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to handicap myself on this one a little bit. Sorry, folks. It's not pretty, but that's, <laughs> that's better. Uh, at least I'm not kicking it. Okay, what do we got next? Divers? Sure. Divers. We, can do that next. we don't have the original diver. The original was what, 65? Six, six? Was that the 6217? I think there was yeah. a picture of them up in the timeline. We had one. Where did it go? Where did it go? Scroll, Here it is. Uh, yep. There you Here's go. the original yep. 1965 first dive watch. Mm-hmm. It's a really, really attractive watch, actually. I really it, like the yeah, dial design on that a it lot. It fetches a premium. Uh, do they? Are they, they do, rare? Yeah, they really do. They're like, like the twenty-five hundred bucks or something. Yeah. Well, I mean, really? compared Depend- to the rest yeah. of Seiko, I mean, yeah, yeah. for sure. That and the, I've seen the sixty-one hundred five, which was the successor to the sixty-two one seven, has been creeping up in price, unfortunately, as well. Yeah. Are they? Um, uh, just iconic, and that's why are they rare? Because they were used and ca- tossed All aside. The above. Yeah, because yeah. the thing with Seiko, as you noted, when they came out, they were that affordable price point. Right. Where and they were particularly one of the divers we'll show next is a sixty three hundred nine, which Seiko just re released. They were used as they were meant to be used. Right. So they were used and abused by people that were like I, I've known. I knew uh, someone that in his earlier career was a scuba diver welder. <laughs> and he had a 6309, and uh-huh. he used and abused the hell out of that thing. Yeah, and nobody, it, it, it like... served faithfully. Nobody bought one as an investment. Precisely. Originally. Not yeah. really. Or not yeah. a not Seiko. Not a Seiko. Yeah, it wasn't like uh, in the military when the, the guys bought the Rolexes. It was because yeah. somebody yeah. said, buy this and, you know, yeah, hold and, on and to Yeah, well, in the military, couldn't they get... They could get it at, the, get uh, at the commissary the or yeah, whatever. Yeah. At the Oh, yeah, the PX, right. Mm-hmm. Was that PX? PX, PX right? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. You see those guys? Everyone's well, seen that video on, like... When the guy finds out his GMT is worth like seventy five grand, loses. Yeah. His fucking money. Oh yeah, I saw that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. The old guy bought it new in like you know fifty five or whatever. Yeah. It was. He For bought not two. Much, I'm sure. Did he? Uh, buy, he oh, he bought two, two and wore one and left the other in the box. No, he bought uh, one was like a date just, and those really didn't go up in value <laughs> yeah. at all. Yeah. And then the other one was the uh, 
It was, a, uh, it was like GMT, a red GMT. GMT, yeah. GMT with the special big light bezel. Just in great so condition. Was it like a Pepsi bezel or something it. like yeah, that? Pepsi bezel. Yeah. yeah, it was like a first year. First year, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it was ridiculous. Just well, came I mean, out. <laughs> the 6105, the one that came after the 6217, actually, there's a big... Let me go find that one. You know, that's not only in movies. I think it was in... Um, oh, God, why am I thinking... Apocalypse Now, actually. Uh, it was worn by the... Um, was it Martin Sheen? I think the main character in Apocalypse Now oh, that's wore good... that watch. So it's like there's that connection to Hollywood movies, and there's a yeah. couple of the watches I brought where I'll talk that, about that yeah, later. But is that, is that the correct one? I want to... Yep, I want, yeah, yeah, okay, that's cool. the 6105. I want to pull up the wrong picture. That's, it's a great-looking watch. I mean, this, the Seiko divers have a very distinct uh, style, you mm-hmm. know, clear, easy-to-read, functional, but they also somehow manage to be... Oh, I feel like like super attractive. Mm-hmm. I fucking love my turtle. I wear my turtle all the time. I leave expensive watches in the yeah. box and wear my turtle all the time. Not like yep. people are like, yeah, you wear it because you don't want to like fuck up the expensive watches. Like, nah, that don't scare me. I just wear it because I like it. Mm-hmm. It's dope. So, what is this one here? So, this is one of the ones that came. I don't think it was immediately there. After there was a short run. I think it was sixty three oh six came after the uh, sixty one oh five. This is a sixty three oh nine, nicknamed the turtle. So this is the first turtle, though. Um, this is the first turtle. Okay, yes. yeah. yeah. So what that, year, that got what that, year is that this moniker. guy from? Uh, it's going to be, I believe, seventy eight through eighty six, eighty seven. I think if I get my my dates correct. Um, and this is actually this is one I use it exactly like I was doing drywall in my house before I moved out here, and I was wearing this. this like is I'm your, not. Yeah. yeah, it's like I I've beat the crap out of it, and there are all manner of like chores, and, and it's. And this is like very, uh, very well. day date, and you know mm-hmm. hours, minutes, seconds. It seems like. Basically, exactly the same functionality as the a brand new turtle, right? Is yeah. anything is it the same movement as they use now, or do they? Uh, no, it, yeah, it's definitely a different movement. It's an improved movement in the, in the new ones. I mean, you would hope. Uh, yeah, thirty years. <laughs> 30, later. thirty years exactly. Yeah, but the thing I mean I love about this is it has the. And you actually see this a lot in watch manufacturers now. They're trying to redo that vintage thing where they have the the aged, if you will, uh, loom. The this, this is the legit they exactly pre cream. The loom this is legit aged loom on this. So yeah. this is that nice. Creamy yellow, if you will, that I I, I just love that. Uh, my actually, I'm ones. very impressed. The the quality of the loom on my turtle is real bright. It's a very Still. very bright dial, and it stays bright for a while. They too. call it like Super Luminova, I think, or I'm yeah, yeah. What Seiko uses. I think yeah, they might be are... on Super Luminova two now. <laughs> it's like the weather radar. Like you know reactive. what I mean? They're at the Mega Super Doppler yeah. twelve thousand. Mm-hmm. <laughs> the rival yeah, ne- the rival that. network yeah. just got the fifteen thousand yeah. guys. <laughs> Um, so as a as a um, what do you want to look out for when you're buying one of these divers? Water sure. damage. I'm and, guessing. and that's the thing. Like, and there's there's a couple things. So there's always water ingress that you have to worry about. Um, the the thing that I will note, unfortunately, with the price uptick in in Seiko that we've seen of late, um, you know, and we, every now and again you will get those things where they're like, oh, that's good for your business. And I'm like, oh, well, we have to source them too, and we're yeah. seeing those prices go up for our own and our own network. But you see a rise in like so-called franken watches which yeah. is which is troubling and that's why it's really like you really need to buy the seller or do your homework right most importantly and uh, aside from a program like this it'd be like worn and wound uh, you know the thing that you brought up right there affordable mm-hmm. vintage they do uh great uh buyer's guides and there's there's a lot of that so do your homework beforehand to avoid that yeah but on this you're going to look for water ingress you're going to look for hints of rust if the dial looks too good to be true probably is too good well because to be like true. everybody mods seiko divers it they seems do. like like that's like the thing it's and like it the mustang or the camaro yeah. of of watches mm-hmm. where people buy it with the express we need to do an episode on modifying these things oh absolutely like yeah. where we'll get some parts and shit and yeah you probably got a bunch of stuff laying around do we could probably have you come back and we'll just like That'll completely change a watch yeah. on the show can't imagine it takes that long. Well, the no. thing is, it's, it's the, some of the dealers and the more unscrupulous ones will not advertise that they're mods. And oh, I'm, yeah. I, trust me, I'm all for I have several modded Seikos myself, um, but I bought them knowing that they were, were modded. There's actually... Yeah, I, some people don't care. I mean, exactly. It, it doesn't... Some, some it's, don't. So it's a... I was at Barrett Jackson, you know, the car auction in, in I, Scottsdale. I've been to there. Before. Yeah. So yeah, have you been to like the show. shit show that's on the side? Yes. Like the the the, the yes. flea market they got going on? Yes. Where they're selling air but fan boats, you know, <laughs> and massage tables and custom boots. Mm. And there's a guy who's selling, you know, fifty thousand dollar Rolex like mill subs and crazy vintage and ghost bezels and all this shit. And literally the same guy who's selling this stuff has a whole case. Of like fake vintage bezels, 
So like, you're like, just, mm. he, I'm like, oh, you're the guy I'm going to buy this from for mm-hmm. sure. I, I will give a shout out to uh, an Instagram page, if you don't mind. It's Please. called uh, uh, at Seiko Busters. And um, it's a, a great, it's it's run by uh, a gentleman out of Australia. Uh, I like the busters. Is, I like all busters. Wrist busters. Shout they, out to wrist busters. Yeah, exactly. Shout yeah. out to fake, well. watch yep. fake watch busta. Fake watch busta is fun. Yep. Seiko busters. I'm a follower. So this you, is son. those things actually like the, the, he is amazing. Like he knows his stuff and he, this is all good right. for the people that are just coming out or, you know, doing that gateway drug that is Seiko. Okay. So are these like, is this guy selling or this? No, for some of these, he's basically saying, I can't believe it's going for this much. It's way too high and price that kind of thing yeah uh but what if you go this one up here this he said was his okay this one he says is so his. that's the one that came in between the one that came just before you six okay. yeah so if you go down to those bottom ones again if it looks too pretty to be tr- too good to be true yeah it probably is so he's showing the differences between what to look for and what yeah. is what is fake so i was going to mention this if you if you look at the seiko dial here mm-hmm. the one we it have has here. that really like those the puffy loom, almost like when they apply it, it's like a foam. Yeah, yeah. It, it almost looks like they okay, like, like take a, like, a, like a foam stick and go. So clink, that's clink. like it. Depending on their process, in Switzerland, that would have been hand applied. Yeah, it yeah. probably was the same. There was somebody that's actually sitting there with a syringe and squirting that on there, and it's very thick. It it goes on there, but it's never going to be perfectly in the center. Uh huh. So if you look around the edge of that loom pillow, you're going to see that it's on top of white paint. Mm-hmm. And it shouldn't be flawless. Well, this one but here. If you look at that. That's actually just. A there's, there's your aftermarket yeah, dial yeah. on the top. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, see, this one, the one uh, that we've got here in front of us, you can see, if, for those of you on the video, you can actually see that the, the mm-hmm. loom on top of the white, it's like sort of a two layer. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Not perfectly even. The one at seven o'clock, the one at two o'clock, the one at four o'clock, at 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock are all just slightly off. You know, zoomed in at four hundred percent, but yeah. Like, yeah, exactly, <laughs> you know, exactly. you're not, you don't see this if you just look at the watch. Yeah. But if you zoom in, I have to say, I got hosed on a buy. I bought a Pogue, like this beautiful six one three nine Pogue, and I got when I and when I got it, I, I pay, the the case was great. Mm-hmm. It wasn't like perfect. It was great. The dial was great. The bezel was great. Crystal mm-hmm. was all right. And it told time, but the spinny inner bezel thing didn't work. Didn't and rotate, like, yeah. and it turns out it had a totally bunk ass bullshit Chinese nothing movement in it. And I got sort of hosed. Is that, is um, that a, an eBay? If yeah, I, I just bought it. off the. I bought it on the internet. I bought it on the internet, and like. I will never buy another watch blindly on the internet uh, ever again. Again, the Seiko Busters, they, one of their first, when they first got on, they've been on for maybe six or eight months. One of the first things they did was an expose, if you will, on the on the Pogue. Yeah. So, and the Pogue, because uh, the so they were the first ones to get like really first, I think, I don't know if it's the color, is it the colors? I think it is, because it just pops on the wrist, because it's that, that blast of gold yeah. and yellow, if you will. Like for me, I was like, ah, oh, I want to wear this splash of color. That was what, yeah, yeah I was like, pops. I could find an outfit the, for the this. Backstory, <laughs> the backstory behind the nickname is just phenomenal. Yeah, so uh, the, what we're looking at right now is a, is a nickname is a Colonel Pogue, 6139 Seiko. And for those listening, it has a ridiculous, ridiculously vibrant yellow gold dial that almost looks like a like a, the top of a guitar. Yeah, you and then the it's way. got the Pepsi uh, colors on the, mm-hmm. yeah. the outer and, bezel and on the, the, the tag. O- the other one as well. Where's the other one? Uh, yeah, this two. one right here. Yeah, there yeah. it is. And then it also comes in sort of a regular Pepsi-ish color with uh, with a regular colored dial. But, but that yellow dial is what's up. So give us the story, Nick, of the Seiko Pogue. Okay, so... As the as as you anyone who collects vintage watches, you've seen things like Omega Speedmaster, where Speedmaster will, to their credit, will never let you forget that you know they are the the watch that that Need NASA picked. One second. Of course, uh, that NASA picked. So they they sell a lot of watches based on their heritage connected with outer space. So there are other watches. Uh, I think Belova has one as well that has gone into space. And there were rumors that uh, there had been a Seiko 6139 that had been taken into place or into space rather than that was this gold dial one. And a one uh, enterprising uh, individual sent a letter to the individual, the astronaut in question, which was uh, U.S. astronaut Colonel Pogue, 
and literally, so that's his name, and literally asked him, hey, is there any truth to this? Not only did the uh, did Colonel Pope confirm that, but he also, you know, wrote a whole, like, I used it, and I used it to time the burns uh, when I was in training. fuck you, Omega. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so no, he timed the uh, yeah exactly, but he t- he he talked about how he used it to time the burns when he was in training, uh, and he got so familiar with it, and I guess they didn't give them the omegas then uh, during training, that he wore both watches when he did blast off because he relied literally on the the timing mechanisms of the Pogue, or I'm sorry, <laughs> of the sixty one thirty nine. Um, so I don't think he was authorized to take that, and he did anyway. So of course, like most things, when that confirmation got out there. Uh, prices started upticking. Yeah, you know it's that backstory that people. I mean, that's why we. Let's face it, that's a lot of reasons why people get into vintage. Yeah, uh, it's the backstory. See, yeah. Cars, watches, whatever. Yeah, uh, particularly with this watch. I mean, that Papio. People are going to ask about it, and if you can tell that story to it, 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 it lends a lot of. Like, I was so excited when I pulled this fucking thing out of the box, yeah. and I was so disappointed when I found out because I here's because I literally sent it to Seiko's service center in Jersey. Understandably, yeah, like. Uh, like if you don't know, like I mean, I'm sure you do. Do you do repair in your shop as well? Mm-hmm. Well, f- send it to fucking Nick. But if you can't send it to Nick, Seiko has like an official service center yeah. that's like a Mercedes Classic or a Porsche Classic center. And so I sent it there, and they were like, mm, yeah. "Not only is your shit a piece of shit, uh, yeah. they said it couldn't be fixed. They said the oh, movements shit. do not exist. We cannot replace it." So I got totally hosed. So that to me is why it's so important Mm -hmm. because like if he told like I I think I spent four hundred dollars on the fake watch, which two Mm -hmm. years ago was like kind of premium. And it's not it's now they're now these are like a thousand, right? They're they're trending, I would say, and we can't even keep them in the shop on on the website. They we tunely depending on condition five to seven hundred. And but I've seen like the the really early models. These came out in sixty nine. Yeah. The really early models can approach that for one in very good shape. Yeah. Well, we'll next that, I'd yeah. like to buy one off of you. And I, as it turns out, like I wish I spent a thousand bucks on a legit one from a legit yeah. guy because the headaches yeah. I ended up with by not just eating the fucking money yeah. Are yeah. so much more than five hundred dollars yeah. worth of headaches. Yeah. Between shipping the thing back and forth, waiting, you know, it's not. <laughs> I don't have a watch, so like. I mean, it's really like I said. I mean, it's really I mean, the, so... by the seller. I mean, that's true of anything yeah. vintage. Yeah, 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 a hundred percent. And so I, I would love to buy a really nice one off of you that like works like it's supposed to. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Because sure, I still want it. <laughs> for those of you not on the video, for those of you listening, uh, the Seiko Pogue is a, like a really. Independent of price, or it's a beautiful design. Mm-hmm. It's a great like. I'd wear that a bunch, for the, sure. And then well, the, when are they going to reissue it? You know they're going to reissue I, it. I've puzzled on that as well because it seems like Seiko was just knocking them down all the the previous yeah. ones that were so famous, be it the sixty two one seven or yeah. the uh, the sixty three oh nine the turtle, like you said. Uh, yeah, I would not be surprised in the next five years to to hear something to hear a like reissued that. Pogue yeah. for sure. Yeah. Was there a um? Wait, was there a period that they didn't make the turtle? Did it go away and then come was reissued, or it was made, being they, made continuously? They stopped. No, they they stopped making them. I believe, and it was either eighty six or eighty eight. Oh, serves, and, then, and then when did it come back? Uh, in the last two years. I oh, say. I didn't realize last, that yeah, that was like years. such a new thing. No, I really didn't is. realize oh, that. It really is. Oh, I just it's like the SRPC forty nine. I think is there. They have one that's all PVD. Oh, it's oh, the black, black the black one. Beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. Shout out my my friend Carl Ruiz. Shout out to Carl, Chef Carl Ruiz, Seiko freak. He was the one who got me into him i didn't yeah. realize that uh that they were gone and came back yeah. Yeah. Mm. that's fucking cool now i'm even more into my turtle actually what's go. the other diver you you have so the the other diver in in for the purists out there forgive me i do have some some quartz watches in here ironically it was seiko that really set off the quartz crisis oh well that oh, yeah. was you know what the last thing on my story the very last thing we stopped at pogue but 1969 mm-hmm. the seiko astron the first quartz that's watch right. ever that's right. Last thing in the history there. So yeah, it, it's there's there there there's Keep maybe a good reason why some Swiss companies aren't fans of Seiko because they have long memories. I would imagine. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so <laughs> this is in fact a, this is a quartz diver. This is the uh, the H five five eight, I believe, and the nickname for this is the Arnie or the Arnold, and that's because Arnold Schwarzenegger in the in his eighties movies, which some of us older folk will remember, wore this. And so Bro. I'm talking like Predator. Raw Deal, Commando. Bro, so, a.k.a. the best movies ever made. I, I have to concur with Commando? that. Commando? Yeah. Commando 
Well, now that you live in Los Angeles, well, now you live in Los Angeles. That's right. Now you can watch Commando with a whole other light. Commando. (laughs) When I moved to L.A., Commando got hella fun. It it was. There's all kinds of great Mm -hmm. Easter eggs if you Commando if you live in L.A. And by the way, highest body count of any movie ever until Independence Day. But Independence Day is sort of bullshit. Well, it's, it's a like, massive explosion. Yeah, it's it fucking nukes. Like, this yeah. is, you know, and yeah, you see bodies flying, yeah. but not one at a time like Arnie did it. Well, that was only two. <laughs> Arnie one did one. it <laughs> doom, 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 one at a time. <laughs> yeah. So this is this is great. I mean, it has, uh, there's, it's not a bright one, but it has like, this is analog, part, I mean, it's all quartz movement, but it's. It's a quartz movement, but it's got a digital, digital display. display in a, your analog yeah. display. Okay, so what is the digital display telling us? So the digital display has a little, you can't see it that well, but it has a light with it. Um, it. It can be hard to find them with that light. A lot of times those are the first thing to break. But it has, you can set, like right now, I think it's set on a different time zone. You can set it on a different time zone, and it's not just stuck to GMT. Like, you can, you can yeah. change that at will. Um, it has day of the week. Uh, there's an, uh, um stopwatch function oh, okay uh, things of that nature what year is this thing from uh, i want to say that like, i'd have to look at the serum but i'd say 80 88 maybe I'm okay gonna, i'm gonna butcher it i have to look at the serial number to be sure in the 80s was like late we're talking was like everyone mid to going courts for divers was that sort of a thing or was it not was it just this one i mean i guess some for people Seiko, still had some mariners and stuff right this yeah. was their this was their main piece that yeah. they sold for quartz divers so yeah it did it this this was something they marketed as a is as it a collectible watch. at all or is it just yeah. that it, it is collectible I, i'd say I mean, again all this is all it's relative. a matter of context because it's not going to be like your bakelite uh pepsi bezel on no no but yeah. we're, we're no, no the, the scale goes, is yeah. smaller yeah. with all of this stuff but i'm oh, talking yeah. about an upward trend oh, that's yeah. all no, I'm i talking i again i mean this is i think people are finally catching on that Seiko is a good buy for the money for yeah. the price point, and I have seen, uh, you know, in just in the last two or three years, prices steadily ticking upwards, and, and this has not escaped that. I'm I'm surprised for the for the the court stuff. I did I don't I it would sh- it surprises me that like I mean like I get I the, no, the I weird agree. alien watch like all right cool but like yeah but yeah. for a regular diver I feel like I could see why the mechanical stuff would be yeah. collectible, but I don't know to me like. Quartz doesn't have a soul. It's like I, collecting I, a Prius. That's why I said, like, like to so the purists. <laughs> yeah. You know? Yeah, uh, yeah. But it's a good looking Well, I mean, I guess if I, I can appreciate the commando connection, it's I would back, go around and be like, story. you know, this is what Schwarzenegger wore in yeah, commando. It's the backstory. Yeah. <laughs> girl, the girl women would be like, get away from me, <laughs> <You> freak. <laughs> what is wrong with you? Um, I can, let's, can we talk about um, this one real quick? This one's actually mine. This one I bought for Hannah, and you can you can go into this. This is called a Lord Matic, mm-hmm. and what I love about it so much is the crystal. I was just um, about to say, yeah, it has. I don't, what is the term for this, guys? A faceted crystal. Faceted yeah. crystal. Yeah. yeah, like it looks like you have a hunk of a diamond ring mm-hmm. on top right. as a crystal, and. I actually didn't know that when I bought it. When I bought it, I thought it just had a weird, like a Camera trippy, like a trippy something. dial or something. I didn't yeah, realize like a square and then some weird paint around the outside. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. but um, this watch was uh, seven hundred dollars used. It's in spectacular condition, mm-hmm. although it needed a service a couple months after I got it. It's an automatic movement with a day and a fucking a kanji day, and yeah. and a date. Yeah. Um, and it actually it keeps really nice time. It's got a beautiful jade dial. And um, it's kind of fragile. Hmm. That would be Hannah broke it a couple of times. <laughs> <laughs> Hannah's was, like, was it a doorknob hit? She, that, yeah, that's... she whacked it on something, and the crystal yeah. came out. Fortunately, yeah. she was able to save the crystal and got it put back in. I don't even know where you well, find that, the crystal. With that heightened this. crystal, you see that. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, so and then moment of terror. And then, believe it or not, the the second hand fell off, which is a <laughs> weird problem. A weird problem to have, but. It but can they're... happen though with vintage watches because the second hand has a really small tube. Yeah. Mm. And that tube stretches out over time. Mm-hmm. Wow. And if you have a vintage watch, you want the original hands. Yeah. You don't want, if you send in a new watch today mm. and a uh, hand like that, they're going to throw it away. They're going to put a new hand on at every service yeah. for that second hand. Re- at every service? Yeah. Every oh, that's service. That's like a straight consumable. Yeah. So oh. there's consumables like that. On a vintage watch, you send it in. You want it to come back with the no same shit. hands. No shit. Yeah, yeah. So these hands on vintage watches, if you have a good vintage watch, they're yeah. not going to be mm-hmm. as solidly placed on the pivots mm-hmm. that they're on. Yeah. So they can fall off with a hit, but there are some some tools that 
certain watchmakers will have that can tighten those again. Well, this is just like a common sense downside of collecting vintage watches yeah, is they're exactly. fragile. Like, yeah. I'm a klutz. Like, that's why I had to sell my vintage watch, my vintage Rolex, and now, like... I had to buy modern watches because, like, I can keep them for a long time, but, like, I need to start with something new because something new is required to handle my klutziness. <laughs> I need durable. Like, I need, yeah, like, yeah. I smash my shit into stuff. Like, it just, it happens, you know? But, and so, Hannah, lo- Hannah loves this and she wears it once in a while, but she's a klutz like me. And I, <laughs> and I, it had to be removed from daily driver use. And I got her a, ro- a vintage Rolex Air King, which is really nice. Mm-hmm. Real, uh, like a, from the 90s, mm-hmm. like a 36. Um, beautiful entry level Rolex. And she smashed that into a <laughs> bunch of stuff. And it's fine. Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but this Lord Manic, um, this was actually, it's a 36, but it was a men's watch. Is it 36 mm-hmm. or 34? It's small. I think that's a thirty six. Yeah, but that's yeah. a but that's a men's watch from Japan in the seventies. Mm-hmm. So like compared to even I don't know Pogue. Yeah, it's yeah. Uh, it's pretty small. Mm-hmm. I wish they would re if they reissued that yeah. it'd be boss. But in like a in a, a I feel like they'd get a lot of buyers too. Yeah, yeah. hell yeah, in yeah. a contemporary size. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Speaking of a lot of buyers and contemporaries, I went to Feldmar. Feldmar is a store shop in LA here that's like got like twenty Swiss brands, but it's also got Seiko and G Shock and stuff nice. like that. And I looked, I was considering getting that the the crazy G Shock, the new reissue one that's like metal. Yes, and it's fully sold out. <laughs> <laughs> that'll happen. Yeah, that'll happen. Um, oh, can we talk about Weirdo now? Yeah, this guy. Yes. Yep. You brought you. So you're talking I, about the smaller diameter, but this was. Yeah, this one is so cool. I, I saw this in your case. This was like the most unique watch that you brought. It's it's really it's a it's a interesting kind of strange looking watch. So tell me about this thing. Yeah, man. What's so the deal? so this this had a number of complications that you could have on it. So here you have first you off, talk- describe it for our radio audience oh, of course, who isn't looking of course, at by it. all means. Yeah. So it's very atypical. Whereas you have two, I don't know, maybe twenty four in diameter watch faces almost, and they they have a hinge and they're connected. So the top one has a compass. Like a the, bendy bus. Exactly. And the, the bottom one has uh, a Seiko quartz movement in it. Again, they're smaller diameter, but they're joined together, so it's a, it looks like a larger watch. And it's pretty large on the wrist, actually. It's like uh, two mini Bell and Rosses right? tied together. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 There's, it's like a square with a round. And so... <laughs> How does it? How does it wear? Does it wear like a normal watch? Or is it, it, it definitely doesn't. Is it uh, comfy? I mean, can I put it on? It depends on the it. strap. I'm still I'll trying try to find it. a good strap to wear on that because a normal strap will be too large because it's probably I would guess that's I'm right because it's 40, a long watch. It's exactly. a long watch. Yeah. Say like 45 to maybe 47 millimeters length. I always have to custom get uh, longer straps. So you have to find a stronger. This is so cool. right, I dude. This I like that this watch looks a lot. gangster. Like I, it's like. <laughs> So you're wearing a pair of goggles on your wrist right. a little bit. Mm-hmm. That's it why it's got great. that camo strap on it too. <laughs> wow, really neat. And so it's a quartz movement, so just a battery, mm-hmm. no big deal. Mm-hmm. Is it is it water resistant at all? I mean, and wash originally your, wash it was, your hands maybe. Wash. Oh yeah, definitely wash your hands. But taking diving with no, 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 I no, probably no, wouldn't advise diving. that. That's fucking thing. You couldn't <laughs> see any. Couldn't see it after a while. Can you spin this bezel? You can. Yeah, yeah. And on the, on the the compass, you can. Oh, sorry, put it back. Undo let, the let uh, crown on the uh, crown, if you will. But on the compass, you can spin the compass dial as well for map reading. If you undo the crown. Yeah, on the on the uh, on the ah, compass. Okay, I was wondering what that was. So that's that locks your. Uh, mm-hmm. Do it under the thing, okay. Cameron. Don't so be I think they selfish, called it. This was this was the. Uh, <laughs> yeah, exactly. This was the Seiko Fieldmaster, and it wow. did. It, and there's there's some. It's not controversy, but there's some. Uh, I, I want to see like a really definitive source lock this down. But amongst the watch community, the nickname is the Contra, and it was rumored that this was issued to uh, Contra fighters. Remember the Iran Contra really? scandal? The Contra fighters. This was issued to them, you know, back in the day for that. Hey, I don't know if there's any truth fa- to that. You can't be famous. Be infamous. I, this is true. <laughs> this is definitely true. That's such a cool watch. Are these? I mean, I've never seen another one. Are these around? Can I you find them? saw one recently on eBay. And that's the first time I've seen one. Is it the Delani? Did, did you buy it? I did not. No, this I've had this for a bit, but it did. This one right here took me about five years to find. Seiko so Contra. So they're they're hard to find. Yep. There Seiko you go. Fieldmaster. The con- here's an article on Hodinkee. The Contra's choice for go. battling the Sandinistas in Nicaragua, mm-hmm. circa 1982. How about that? Oh, I was just about to ask. Exactly. Replace. I was just. I, I only have those two for that one. Unfortunately, my next question was about 
replaceable modules. Yep. So Which I see a stopwatch. And then what's this other module? It's uh, like a, a map meter. Uh, I, I, I won't pretend to know. Uh, it came with a digital alarm it, tool and a map. Oh, guide. okay. Yeah. So that's that's for measuring distances on a there map. You go. Cool. Yeah. Everything's wow. working perfectly. Okay, so this one here's one that was being it being sold by Hodinkee for eight hundred and forty five dollars. Yep. Cool. That's cool. I would have bought that for eight hundred and forty five. I'd buy that for eight hundred and forty five bucks. Again, that's again, it's a great. backstory. It's a Hell badass yeah. backstory. It's a Cold War, you know, type. Dude, here you want to talk Cold War? Here we go. I got your I got your fucking Russian <laughs> Cold War right here, son. I got your Russian Cold War <laughs> snowmobile goggles. These things are rocking. Go. That's amazing. Yeah. Um, that's great. I love that. Is there anything else? What else do you have in your in your collection? Do you want to do you want to talk about anything else? You also, I mean, um, all right. So we said, you know, buy from seller. What are some other you know Seiko investment tips if you have any? Um, it's really do your research first. Let me get some of that. Buy goes into learning the sellers rep online forums, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But a lot of it does, is do your own research. And there's this amazing tool that, to a lesser extent, I really didn't have when I was in high school, and it's the internet. Yeah. Uh, and there's particularly Seiko because it is so damn popular. You can find a lot of people, Hodinkee, uh, like I said, Warren and Wild, and they will do uh, shoppers, they're like buyer's guides for those and what to look for. And I found a lot of those remain, even though they were done in Warren and Wild and Hodinkee's like early years, like, you know, eight, seven years ago. Mm hmm they're still authoritative and it's still the same guidelines that are being issued by like contemporary um, experts like Seiko Busters. Yeah. And so they're great resources to use. I so if you want to look up them. like uh, model numbers or something and yeah. then kind of take a look, they have some, yep. some pictures it's, it's your, and it's your Google and search. It's your, you know, putting in Seiko 6139 or the, the Contra, like yeah, those, yeah. you know, the, the search terms that will really help you. Uh, do that expertise or if it's like for instance for DC vintage watches it's like literally you know sending us an email and asking us questions I mean we're, we're always available uh, to, to respond to that and we usually respond pretty quickly I'm gonna plug this guy too he's not a seller so don't uh, worry yeah. don't you know I, this I guy definitely know, I definitely know I follow this guy on Instagram Bert, anyone who knows Seiko knows yeah him. Burtnet69 yep. is this amazing watches. freak Seiko collector uh, just yeah uh, <laughs> occasionally he sells but yep. it seems like everything he owns is fucking mint new old stock it's yeah it's amazing this left stuff and he puts up there yeah so if you wanna if you wanna be like yep. which Seiko is right for me mm -hmm. uh, this dude really Gives you a pretty, a pretty wide ranging variety pretty of Seiko damn good shit. Good photography to, too, I'd say. His Instagram account's amazing. Yeah, this is a good one. I don't know. I don't know why this guy doesn't have more than nine thousand seven hundred followers. Go follow this guy. Maybe if we ever get this dude on, if you ever come to America, Burtnet sixty nine, <laughs> come on the show. We'd love to have you. Uh, what, I'll, I'll just sit in the audience and ask <laughs> to see watches. Do you have a personal so favorite? Uh, as far as Seiko goes, yeah. it's it's going to be the sixty one thirty nine line. Uh -huh. And it's like again, like I, I was talking about the two. That we just looked at, but also like there Do you was have another like, one? for sixty one thirty nines. There was at least a dozen variants, and this is another one they call this. What's this? Uh, the helmet, or the I've even heard like it called oh, like the yeah. Vader. Yeah, it, yeah, if yeah. You, if you look at the side profile, it's got like that helmet shape. Um, that but, seems like that would work on a smaller wrist. It's a pretty sharp curve, and it to rides that. pretty high in the wrist too. So yeah. the crystals are usually the first thing to be replaced on those. That's so a nice. It's a very up. attractive piece. Like I wish it was twenty percent bigger. I couldn't wear mm. that. It's like real. Well, wait for the small. reissue. I'm sure that <laughs> the yeah. reissue will be bigger. So it's the sixty one thirty nine, and it's also like I'm recently really uh, dorking out, if you will, on like this. What is it? The six one zero six and the six one one nine line. Uh, which is like some of the ones like, like this one right here. And they, they go they six one zero six. Six one zero six. So, on this one, basically you've got your time, you've got your day and your mm -hmm. date, and then you've got your it'll. It's a thirty minute counter and then sixty second counter in the center. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So it. it I mean, it doesn't Apologies even look like you the, have a chronograph except the for the buttons, right? I can't see the. Yeah, no. no, it's this one's weird because it's like a chronograph that doesn't really look like a chronograph, right? How do wait? wait all so right. it's a it's a thirty minute chronograph. Oh. So the only thing that's really a giveaway is the fact that obviously it's a thirty minute. You know, you've got thirty a yeah, thirty exactly. subdial instead of a sixty. Okay, so yeah. it uses the second hand and then third the subdial for minutes. Yeah, so there's oh, no weird... running second hand. Yeah, oh, that's so right? weird. That's super strange. Oh, what else are you pulling out, Nick? You got some other just random. So like we were talking about the sixty one oh six, like the they call them the saucers. 
program called UFOs, but that's a that's a different one. But the saucers really these that's, are two that's these, these are guys? two examples. Um, they're known for throw those under like him. just the crazy colors of the dial, like you said, like it's very seventies. Yeah, like, I remember we were talking about uh, in in our we did a dive watches episode right. uh, recently, and we, oh, sorry Ooh. too zo- too far zoom. How do we get all twisted too? I don't know what happened. We're all angled. <laughs> I fucked it up. Wait, oh, oh the X Y ro- oh the Z rotation he, he got us twenty three degrees off. Zam really <laughs> fucked it up. My bad. Um, we were talking about Doxa, and these remind me right. of Doxas because they always use those bright orange and yellow and crazy dials. These are like. Great for an outfit. Yeah. This is an outfit watch. Yeah. Super bright, fun dials in crazy weird colors. I like how they all have day and date. They all everything's a day date. It's pretty yeah. And Rolex charges you so much money for that, <laughs> right? And for them, they're just like, well, that's how we make the movement, and we're not going to take it off because yeah. it'll cost too much money to take it off. <laughs> yeah, they're great. That's a, how much do these things go for. Saucers. Depending on the variant, like the orange ones tend to fetch a bit more, but they come again. It's the very seventies. It'll be an orange dial or the yellow dial. Those are the two of the more, the, particularly the yellow and green dial. You don't see those very often. Um, those I've seen fetch anywhere between three to five hundred, depending on condition. Or the um, here's a fairly beat blue dial on eBay for buy it now sixty bucks. But I don't. I, yeah, I that's a different. Uh, is it different? Yeah, that is a. Maybe look for 6106 and like the word saucer, I think, would oh. probably pop. All right, well. But you, you, they had black dials. They had like a chocolate brown dial and things like that. Um, and they, I think the, the watch community has recently started to, the Seiko ones particularly, are starting to pick up on these. Yeah. Um, personally, like, I, I love them. Like, they, they're just, they scream 70s. Totally. Um, I, I mean, all of these, get, just give me a, an array of colors, Cameron, under there. <laughs> I'll zoom out a little bit. I mean, all these these beautiful, you know, we got the super vivid blue and the orange and the yellow and the gold and like, you got any fun colors in the box down there, Nick? Yeah, this what is other... a, this is another. You don't see these very often either. Actually, aside from the Contra, this is this is only a little less rare. And this is a, a yacht. It's like a yacht timer. Oh, I didn't like really realize. Oh, like that's from a DC, beautiful. We love our, our yacht, our regatta racing. So it, there's a lot of that. Wait, in the East hold Coast. that, hold that real still, Cameron. Hang on. So it, uh, I apologize for the sports, in. but uh, <laughs> but it's a really pretty dial. And they did reissue this, but it, I think they reissued it in like the mid to late nineties. It's a really cool piece. And you just never see these. Um, it, it's it's rare. That's a that's a very fun piece. I like this. And it's the again, it's the colors that that really pop on this yeah. that I love. So you have like the blue, is, yellow, the light a, blue, a whole array of colors happening mm-hmm. here. Yeah, it's fun, super fun. Wow, thanks for bringing this collection in, Nick. I really appreciate it. I want to end uh, this show, actually. Um, before we do that, check out DC Vintage Watches uh, for Nick. He's in. Uh, he's got a shop in DC as well as now in uh, California. Yeah, recently expanded to California. Uh, but I imagine you're mostly mail order. Uh, yeah, it's for online. Retail. Yeah, it, it, it keeps the uh, the cost down. Right, quite a bit actually. But uh, sales and service uh, mm-hmm. for Seiko and Hoyer. As well, yeah, we'll have to. We'll, we're, the two main ones. We're gonna do another a separate deep dive on Hoyer, and I know you, you brought Hoyers, but we'll we're gonna do a whole separate no, show on that. We'll have you come back yeah, for Hoyer. Um, we're just starting to do the individual brand deep dives now. Excellent. Um, but um, you know, on a, on a recent show, uh, we we I didn't know how to how to t- how to tackle this originally, but we d- we reviewed our first watch as far as uh, on our on our, on our last show. And actually, the audience liked it. They didn't really like the watch, but we didn't either, so it's okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, but they liked that we were doing watch reviews, and they liked the exposure to micro brands because mm-hmm. they think that it's a there's a watch renaissance happening right now, yeah. and micro brands should get love. And so, with that, um, I was contacted by a micro brand. It's actually from Switzerland, aren't they, Cameron? They're from... They're a Swiss company, yeah. They're a Swiss company, and they're from... What's the name of that city? Uh, that pre- one, I do not know. <laughs> I have never... It's, it's certainly not a watchmaking town that I know of. Uh, well. But the company is a Swiss-based company. I, I don't know if they're actually making watches in Switzerland, um, but they're a Swiss-based company, They're a company, Swiss-based right? company, and they're called the Stratton Watch Company, and that's uh, S-T-R-A-T-O-N, watch, uh, StrattonWC.com. Um, and they sent us some watches, and I, to- I tell them the same thing I tell everybody. I'm going to put these watches in the hands of Cameron Weiss, 
And um, the reason I wanted to do this today with Nick here as well is because the Stratton Watch Company's designs uh, really uh, kind of are familiar or would be familiar to someone who collects Seikos and Hoyers from the 60s and yeah. 70s. So throw a couple of these under the under the camera, Cameron, and uh, and let's take a look at these. So these watches are like not expensive. I I they're pretty cool designs. Definitely 70s, 60s, 70s inspired. We've got uh, t they're all chronographs. They Matter remind fact, me a lot of all Hoyer. Mm -hmm. A lot of Hoyer. Yeah, a lot of Hoyer. Yeah. Um, yeah. And they, definitely, they got the wacky colors like those Seikos we had in there. Yeah, you can darken, darken the thing. The whites get a little blown out there just a bit. Yeah, they're right good? there. Perfect. Yeah, it's good. Okay, All cool. Right. Um, and I, I think they have a, a really nice weight to them. They do. Um, yeah, they feel you know solid. Like I hate when they when companies intentionally try and make a watch super heavy to like make you think it's better, but like it feels heavy enough that it's solid, but not so heavy that. Someone is trying too hard. Too hard. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I, I think the, the the I'm colorblind, but I think for me the colors work. Like you could wear these with a bunch of different outfits. Um, I don't know, Cameron. What do you think? They're automatic movements. Uh, I don't know. What are your thoughts? I will look up pricing while you give me the thoughts, Cameron Weiss. I uh, the the first thing I thought when I took them out of the box was these are they the cases feel really nice. They feel like quality cases. Um. And I was definitely intrigued by the designs because it, it really does kind of go back to those Hoyers. Yeah. Those old Hoyers, the square, like you've got this one, square we have, watch. We got with more square, here. We have two uh, more. Square sub dials, square dial. It's kind of a weird. It's a weird shape, but exactly. like it's it's kind of like funky and fresh too. I don't know. Yeah. Nick, Nick, what are your thoughts? No, it, it, they definitely. Just to draw on what Cameron said, they they very much scream seventies. Um, like the the uh, the one with the the blue rally uh, on the inner, uh, yeah. or rather on the bezel insert. Yeah, very much reminds me of the the Seiko rally divers. Yeah, I mean, there's like somewhere between a diver and like a sport chronograph. How does that feel when yeah. you spin that bezel? Feels good. Solid? Yeah. So these ones, um, which this guy here, the square guy with the three sub dials, is uh four hundred and fifty dollars in quartz or eleven uh. 1200 US in uh with an automatic movement and I think that's pretty reasonable. Look at all these colors. Jesus, you can get this in a lot of colors. I like this because here's why I like this. Oh, here's the move, you know, the movement. It's a 7750, bro. Yeah, which Swiss really... made and it's a Swiss made 77. And how much is the the watch? The automatic is 1200 bucks for that square. See, so that's what I was was talking about last week when I said that watch has the the Eta 7750 right. and it seemed like it had to at least be a thousand fifteen hundred dollars right. something like that. Well, that I think this watch is yeah. appropriately the watch we looked at last week had the same movement it was 10 grand. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I don't know about that. Um and yeah. I actually feel like these cases are really nicely made. I don't I don't know where, but the finishing is nice and the weight is good and uh, Let me go the back bezels to bezels work nicely. Yeah, I mean, if these are, and I asked, I asked them to only send. I didn't want to see the quartz ones. I only wanted to see the automatic because I'm a snob. Let's see what the other one. Um, this one is automatic only. Is this automatic only? Uh, or I'm sorry. This one might be. This one here is a quartz. That's oh, we do have one quartz. Okay, yeah. so the quartz one is five hundred bucks. Put the quartz one down there real quick. That quartz. This quartz in the middle, which is also a, a quartz chronograph. What does the opposite side knob do there? It's got uh, an extra knob. What's yeah, that for? I'm guessing it's going to be this internal bezel. Yeah. Okay, oh, it's yeah. got an inside bezel. Oh, that's that neat. In internal bezel rotating now. How's the action feel? It feels good nice. for a five hundred dollar watch. It feels really nice. I think for five hundred, that's cool. Yeah. I wouldn't. I would. I'd probably, if I could afford it, I'd probably spring for the the automatic ones. But like, mm -hmm. that's pretty nice. I gotta say, I'm pretty impressed. And then like. Check this out. We'll come back up to this A cam here. They got each watch comes in this nice leather case that's made for the watch with extra NATO straps. And I don't know. There's quite a few in there. What's yeah. the, is this a strap changing tool? Yeah. Two extra straps and a nice strap changing tool. <laughs> Dude, I think these guys are onto something. Honestly, these are nice. Like right? these, like I'm supposed to send these things back, but like I might ask <laughs> to keep one. <laughs> They're fucking sweet, dude. What's the, this one? Did that that one didn't get so much camera time? The big yeah. I, this one, the design of it, kind of seems out of place. 
it almost compared looks, to the other ones. It right? does. It looks like a, a little Shinola y, right? Yes, definitely. Hmm. Is that is this you? Yeah, that's this guy. So this is seven hundred and forty nine dollars. Is that quartz too? Uh that one is automatic, I thought. Is it? Oh yeah, automatic. Automatic, sorry. It only comes in automatic. It's in the title. Yeah. I apologize. This one's automatic and it's eight hundred dollars. Yes. Which again, not a bad price for a Swiss made, you know, seventy seven fifty. But I don't know. I something about the logo this one, on this, this one's one is, not a seven seven fifty. Oh, it's, it's not a different uh different movement. So I don't Ew. I don't know if it's uh, that, an huh? Asian oh, movement or a Swiss. Wait, what does movement? it say down here? Three L Z F. What's a three L Z F? Three L Z F. Don't know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right. <laughs> not sure. I don't know. Maybe it's from somewhere else. I think probably an Asian, okay. Asian mm-hmm. movement. So which ones are I think the, what's the winner? The, this guy's the winner, right? And then what is he is this guy automatic too? Uh let's see. Yeah, this one uh, That one's automatic, right? Yep. And okay. actually display case back. Yeah. So this one's an Asian movement, so it'll be a less expensive, but it's got Oh, it has display a display back. case back. Okay, wait, cool. Wait, go to that. Oh, it's not How is how does the movement is it See, so uh 4.99 for an automatic, is that right? No. 4.99 is uh, that's right. Yeah. yeah. Where's yeah? Is it automatic? It's a less expensive Asian uh, automatic. This says Seiko Mecha Quartz Hybrid. What the hell does that? Is that is that correct? Is that the right watch? Are we looking at the right watch, Cameron? Okay. Is that so, a Mecha Quartz Hybrid? This is. I don't know. Run the run the, run not it. Mecha Quartz. Uh oh. Like Did they stump us? Have they stumped us with this one? This says Seiko. So help us out, Nick. Seiko was so that say? a Mecha Quartz is is supposed to be a. It's supposed to be a mechanical. Yeah. Or it's supposed to be a mechanical chronograph. Uh huh. But a quartz movement. Hmm. But I see a mechanical movement. Unless they're hiding the battery somewhere. Does that say automatic yeah. on it? <laughs> does that say automatic yes. caliber yeah. something on it? It does. It says automatic caliber something, right? Automatic NE88, which is, yeah, Seiko. <laughs> so it's Mecha Quartz, or it's... No, it's, I, I think this might be a different uh, version or something that's oh. not on their website. I'm confused yeah. a little bit. I mean, did I miss it? Maybe I missed it. Maybe I fucked up. Mm. Is it somewhere I didn't see it? So the... Huh. Yeah, because that's weird. The NE88 is a, is a pretty common, mm. commonly used Seiko movement. And that's a regular automatic movement? Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, that I mean, look, if it says it's stamped on the watch, I'm gonna go with that. I really do like the uh, the bezel insert on that. I, uh, That's a on that watch right there. Pretty crazy. watch. You you see those on some high end watches as well. I, it's I a like pretty it. watch. I wish in this other one. I wish in this other big chronograph they they use the small logo that they mm. used on this one. I don't yep. think they need to use the huge logo. But yo. Good job, Stratton. I think, I think that's the the one right. That's there. the winner. The yeah, one we've got one on the right screen here. here. Yeah, I think is the winner. Yeah. I think that's, that's my winner. Movement. Or if, if I'm not so into square, but this the square guy, I think is pretty cool. Those are my my two winners. But I have to say, it's just because it's a Seiko movement. <laughs> yeah, no, <laughs> yeah, Nick, bias, so, yeah, Nick's know. bias. But I think these <laughs> these two are going to be our winners for Stratton. The one on the right, the square guy, is the is the uh, seventy seven fifty, and that's twelve hundred dollars. Mm. And the other one is seven hundred fifty bucks. Yeah. Dude, that's that's value, I think. Those are nice. I'm going to have to ask them to keep these. <laughs> we should do a giveaway, honestly. I think yeah. I think we should think give these nice. away. I think the audience would like these. So, uh Stratton Watch Co. uh, uh it's uh S T R A T O N W C dot com. Stratton, thank you to those guys for sending that in. I hope you enjoyed our feedback. Nick, what do you want to plug before we wrap this up? I mean, aside from the obvious, uh, check DC us out. Vintage Watches. Yeah, check us out. We have a, a website. It's www.dcvintagewatches.com. Uh, we also are very up, active man. on Instagram and all other social media, but particularly Instagram. Oh, uh, we, boy, we your do, pop-ups. Yeah. We, <laughs> Sorry. We do giveaways as well about once a month. They're Ooh. usually 80s-era automatic Seikos paired with uh, either some NATOs or um, there's uh, one individual. He's on uh, Instagram. It's called Seiko Hats. Very easy to remember, but... He basically got a small batch of Seiko uh, patches, and he puts them on all manner, manner of things, particularly oh, hats. Cool. But he can do customized stuff. It's great stuff. I have a bunch of those hats. They're oh, cool. Um, but, uh, yeah, I gave a shout-out to Seiko Busters. They're, they're great for people starting out or even – I mean, I, I won't lie. I learned stuff um, from that on a regular, too, from some of the more you know esoteric Seiko watches, and there's tons of those. Cool. Cameron? 
And thanks for having me, by the of, way. Oh, Candace. of course. Nick Farrell from DC Vintage Watches. Hit him up. Cameron Weiss, plug it out, dude. Cameron M. Weiss on Instagram. <laughs> Find me. Uh, I'm, I'm actually going to be in Switzerland, I think, when this uh, when this one airs. Oh, it's going to be awesome. And I'll be going live on uh, on my Instagram and also put, posting pictures from a show called EPHJ, which is like a watchmaker's trade show. It's nice. Basel World, but just for the people who are <laughs> actually making watches, not the people selling them, just behind-the-scenes stuff. It is a nerd festival. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait to see it. Thank you guys for listening. Crown & Caliber, Beeline Coffee, thank you for sponsoring us. And uh, we will see you guys next week. Good day! Good day!